Okay, so before I actually talk about the scriptures for today, I wanted to make a public service announcement for you all. Those of us who are of uh, at least 23 years of age and can remember this, um, we used to ring the bells. Remember to ring the bells? You know, communion, Father holds up the hose and ring, ring, ring the bells. We are going to ring the bells during the liturgical seasons. So we are going to ring the bells uh, in Advent and Christmas time, and we're going to <laughs> and we're going to ring the bells uh, during Lent and Easter time. So those times of the year we will. The the ordinary time we will not. All right. So today's scripture passages are all tied together. Most of the time, it's just the first reading and the third reading, you know, the reading from the Old Testament and the Gospel that echo each other. But in this particular case, all of them, Daniel, Hebrews, and the Gospel, all echo each other. And they all echo each other in one particular way. The way is that they bring something to the table about the subject of today, which is the second coming of Christ. That's what all these readings are about. That's what they relate to. They relate to the second coming of Christ. And so, you know, our job here is to break open what that really means. Okay? To break open what it really means. And one of the ways I'll do it is to tell you a little story. Back in... 2001, there was a, pre a preacher. His name was Camping, Harold Camping. And in 2001, Pastor Camping, for I don't know how he did it, he believed that he had calculated the exact date of the rapture and of the judgment. And he said that it would occur on May 21, 2011. That was the day of the judgment. Who remembers this? Anybody remember? Yeah, we all remember this, right? Okay. And when May 21 came and went, and unfortunately for Pastor Camping, we didn't see the rapture or the, or the judgment, he said, you know what? May 21 was just the spiritual rapture and judgment. The real rapture, the real judgment, was going to occur on October 21, 2011. As it happened, Ellen and I were on vacation on October 21, 2011. And so we were sitting in a hotel room, again, just relaxing at the end of the day. Um, one thing I forgot to tell you is this, and that is that not only did Pastor Camping tell us what date it was, he told us the exact time that the rapture was going to take place. 6 o'clock p.m. Pacific Coast time. Okay, so at 6 p.m. we were going to have the rapture, the rapture and, the, and the judgment. Well, at 6.01 p.m. Pacific Coast time, as we're sitting in a hotel, our phone starts to ring. And we answer the phone... And it's my son, Jeff. And he says, thank God you answered the phone. I just got home. There's no one here. There's no one in the parking lot. And I was getting afraid that I had been left behind. <laughs> Here's the ironic part of that story. The ironic part of that story is that not only did Harold Camping get the date wrong, which of course we should have guessed anyway because Jesus says nobody knows the day and hour, but the, the real issue for him is that what Camping meant by you know, the, the rapture and the judgment is that those who were righteous would be taken from the earth. And those who are unrighteous would be left behind. In fact, in 
Friday's scriptures in our, in our daily lectionary, there is the passage from Luke where Jesus himself says, you know, two people will be sitting, you know, at, on a bench. One will be taken and one will be left behind. Two people will be lying in a bed. One will be taken and one will be left behind. And the ironic thing about Camping's prophecy is that he got it all wrong, all of it. And how do we know that? We know that because that passage from Luke that is in Friday's lectionary, Jesus tells us that when the Son of Man comes, it will be like the time of Noah. It will be like the time of Lot. And what happens with, what happened with Noah? Noah and his family went into the ark. Everybody else was going on their own way, continuing to do the stuff that they were doing. But as soon as Noah and his family went into the ark, all the other people on the earth were destroyed and taken away from the earth. And what happened with Noah? Well, what happened with Noah is that the ark rested on the mountain. And Noah and his family inherited the earth. Same thing with Lot. What is Lot associated with? Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah. So Sodom and Gomorrah are destroyed and all the people are killed. And they are taken from the earth. Where does Lot go? He stays on the earth. And so the message for us theologically is that camping and that other guy, what's his name, Lahane? The, the Left Behind books. Trust me, if you have a, if you have a Tim LaHaye book in your, in your house, throw it in the trash. <laughs> because it's just wrong, wrong, wrong. The reality, it is the just who will inherit the new heaven and the new earth. So, and, and a, a great example of that is the original Greek. Because the original Greek with that thing about where Jesus says one will be taken and one will be left behind. The original Greek actually is probably better translated as one will be seized and the other will be released. So it sort of gives you a better understanding of, of how all that works. So, what does it mean to us? First of all, what happens in the second coming? Who comes to judge? What happens? Who comes to judge? The Go to heaven? Maybe. Maybe. Final judgment. We read it in the creed every single Sunday. He will come to judge the living and the dead. That's what the second coming is. That's what it is. And what is, what is he going to do when he judges the living and the dead? The answer is, it's in Daniel. We just read it, didn't we? Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some shall live forever. Others shall be an everlasting horror and disgrace. But the wise will shine brightly like the splendor of the firmament, and those who lead the many to justice shall be like stars forever. And my sisters and brothers, this is, this is our challenge. Where on that divide will we fall? That is our challenge. Now, Jesus says all of these things will happen before this generation passes away. And the thing that you need to know about all the things that Jesus is talking about is he's not talking about baby boomers or Generation X or millennials or anything like that. He's not talking about little tiny pieces of time, 20 years, 30 years, whatever. When the people of Israel talked about generations, what they were talking about was the time from when God made his promise to his people to the time that his promise is fulfilled. It could be a, a year, it could be 10 years, it could be 10,000 years. 
So Jesus is talking about a different kind of time frame. Okay? So, in our passage from Hebrews, the second reading, there is this, there is this statement that the priests make sacrifice, but the sacrifice they make will never take away sin. How are we to understand that? Well, for us, the real response to that is that there is nothing, nothing, nothing that we can do. There are no actions that we can take. There are no works that we can do. There is nothing that will justify us before God, that will take away our sin other than the sacrifice of Christ. It is through the sacrifice of Christ that we can be saved. But we don't do it because of our effort. We do it because of our faith. That is how we are saved in the coming times. My sisters and brothers, I have a hope and a prayer for all of you. My hope and prayer is when the Lord comes again, you all will be left behind. May the praise be to Jesus Christ, now and forever.